Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to Geonos Daily Series, where we do something cool in geometry nodes in 10 minutes or less. And today our we are going to tackle this uh, intricate pattern cube design and its animation. And I'm uh, going to show you a lot of stuff. I'm going to show you how you can split this cube, how you can use uh, the random value node to generate predictable uh, values, uh, how to use float curve to offset the animation, and uh, some more. So stay tuned. We have a lot of things to do. So the first thing um, I want to do is uh, to add a cube. So I want this cube and uh, I want this connected to the output. Awesome. I want to get rid of this outline. I don't like it. So now we have this uh, cube. I'm going to increase the resolution a little bit. Give it like 32. And then I want to add a geometry, uh, separate geometry. And now I want to build a selection for this uh, geometry based on the mass gray texture. And I want to uh, do a compare float. I can leave it just as default and plug it here. And uh, as you can see, we have this uh, result. Let's play a little bit with the settings. I'm going to increase the scale a little bit. And then um, I'm going to switch this one to hybrid multi fracture. That gives us a little bit more settings and a different pattern, basically. So once I have this, I'm going to do a geometry, uh, join geometry, and put both pieces uh, back. And I'm going to switch this separate to face. And that gives us the appearance of our cube back. But now we can do different stuff with the uh, with this, so let's do a geometry transform, plug this one here, and uh, then uh, we can duplicate and plug this one here, and we will build our, build our animation now. So there are some inputs that I want. I want a value to plug the frame here, and then um, <coughs> I want to do some math on it. So I'm going to switch this one to cosine, plug this value here. And um, because I don't want to deal with the negative values of this function, I'm going to switch this one to absolute. And now we have something like this here, something that I can plug into the scale of this node. So now if I play the animation, I get this because I kind of need to control the speed. So switch this one to divide, let's say like 40, and then play. And now we have an animation on that cube. Nice. Okay. I want to do something similar on the this one. So now let's do control H to make this node smaller. And now everything scales uniformly. But I would like to change that. So let's add in utilities and the float curve, plug one here, duplicate, plug one here. So let me move this on a little bit. And uh, we can do something with this one. This one it's, has an output from 0 to 1. This is exactly what we get from here. So everything is nice and sync. So let's do a little bit of uh, modeling on the animation. And I'm going to do something slightly different on this one. Something maybe like this. And then I'm going to put this on like this and do a little bit of a curve here on the top. Something like this. And watch what happens with our cube now. We kind of get different, different result. But it's interesting that on frame one, we have the uh, nice and smooth cube. And I would like to keep this to control when we start our animation, because now it depends on nothing. You start the animation and things goes 
like in on forever so i want to uh, do this i'm gonna add a clamp node and uh, we'll clamp to zero value and we want to decide the maximum here that will be uh, exactly when we we are going to start our um, animation we are going to add an offset so let me do this value here switch to subtract this will be our offset so clamping to zero means that the offset will be ignored so let's leave it like 40 and if we play the animation at frame 40 nothing happens because uh, we are, want to give it a maximum and i want to do it in a more procedural way so i'm gonna go to the end frame here and do copy as new driver duplicate this value paste driver now we have procedurally plugged in here the end frame so plug it here and now when we hit frame 40 animation starts and continues till the end of uh, the entire setup so that will be the first part of the animation i want to do something more to this i want um, to add another level of uh, uh, details i want to transform uh, part of the cube into a grid so let's say we're gonna take this part and we are going to turn it into a grid okay so basically i want to do a curve curve uh, to mesh and then i want to add a profile that will be a circle this one will have a radius very small something like this and uh, not too much resolution only four points will be enough and i want to do this because we have a mesh here i want to do a mesh to curve first so now um, after this transform i can plug the mesh to curve here and uh, add this profile setup afterwards and now we have this uh, turned into a mesh and i think uh, i wanted to make it a little bit thicker something like this but i want the cube to start as a full cube so how am i going to do this i'm gonna add a switch and i'm gonna plug it here and um, this switch will have this geometry and this geometry here and let's go to frame one this now switches between the two states and i want to build a, a mask of this um, switch and how are we going to do this we are going to compare these values when they are equal that means we are at the beginning because if we look at here this is one this is one well it's not computed yet but it's one uh, so when these values are equal that means the surfaces are overlapping so we want are leveled so we want them uh, uh, in this state so let's do a compare float and switch this one to equal and i'm gonna remove the offset and i'm gonna compare these two values and uh, these two values and now let me take this one and plug it here into our switch and uh, let's switch this one to not equal okay so now we get this and then it switches awesome but i want to do even more with this because you saw in the demo we have another level of uh, 
animation. I actually duplicated this entire uh, uh, setup here. How I did it, let's add a mesh, mesh uh, line and um, now we are going to instance this setup, the entire setup on this line. I only want three instances. So let's do instances, instances on points. I'm going to plug this one here. This is the points. This is the instance. Okay. So now we have uh, this setup. I'm going to switch this one to zero because I want all of them to be on the same spot. And I want to do something with the rotation and the scale. I want to scale them uniformly. So they will get like inside of each other, something like this. And I also want to rotate them to 90 degrees to change the pattern that we see. So it will not be the same. So let's start with the scale. I'm going to use an utilities uh, random value, a node. And I'm going to switch this one to integer and give it one, two, three. We have three instances. So now if we plug this into the scale and switch to Z, we get this result. We have them nicely scaled the way we want it. But I want to keep the scale into the range that we had um, to one. So I'm going to do a scale of the entire setup by one divided by three. So now we keep our original scale intact. Awesome. Now I want to do something uh, in the same line with the um, rotation. So let's do a vector. And I want to plug this into the rotation. And we see we get this craziness. I don't want to rotate it like, like this. I want to... Uh, actually, I can do in two ways. So let's do it a float and do a vector combine x, y, z. Plug this one here. And I want to rotate on only one axis. Let's uh, decide the axis. Let's rotate it on the z and on the y. So I'm going to plug this one here. And I'm going to do it from minus 300 and degrees and 60 degrees to 360 degrees that's in radian here so now i get this random rotation but this is not what i want i want to control this so let's do a math plug it here and switch this one to snap and snap it into 90 degrees uh, and 90 degrees will be pi divided by 2 pi being 180 and now we get a random rotation in 90 degrees increments. So this is what we wanted. And I want to do something else now. I want to, uh, because now if we start, we get this. Everything is moving, but I want to offset the animation for these ones. So let's do an instance, uh, instance scale, plug this one here. And I want to scale them different differently but i want to do it uh, only for the inner two instances so we are going to build a mask based on index so let's take the input index and uh, of course the usual compare value so let's say greater than and greater than zero it will be okay and i want to scale these instances Let's say, let's make it like, uh, in order to see it, let's make it like two. And uh, now we plug this selection here. So now you see one instance stays put and the other two are scaling. But uh, I want to do something more interesting with the scale than just plugging some value here. And what I want is to, uh, let me make some room use these ones values that we created here so let's take a uh, utilities 
no, vector combine x, y, z. And I want to scale on the x and on the y based on the values here. And uh, I'm going to plug this one here. by using a vector, vector math, plug this value here and switch this one to scale. Okay, you'll see why, immediately why I want to do this. I'm going to plug this one here and now I want to control the scale also in the random fashion based on one of these two values. So I'm going to do a uh, utilities uh, map range, if I can find it here. And I'm going to plug this one into the value and this one into the scale. And I do this because I want to start with the scale of one. And uh, I want then to have some different scales as the animation goes on. So after we pass those frames, we kind of get this result that you see here. And there are a few things that I want to do. I want to add now a solidify modifier to this one to complete the effect. So let's do a solidify. I'm going to do like maybe 0.3 on this and nothing happens because um, we need to add a realize instances here at the end for the solidify to work. And now we get this result. We kind of have to make the grid a lot smaller. That's one thing we need to do. We will also want to decrease this thickness to get something like this. I also want to uh, go here well, before we started to create this setup that duplicated the geometry. And uh, before that, I want to add the set smooth mesh, uh, mesh mesh, set shape smooth. And uh, because if we go to frame one, we get this problem. I want to control this shade smooth based on this mass that we created here. So, uh, I'm going to plug it here. And now when we play the animation, everything gets nice and smooth. But when we, it starts, we get this uh, effect. And I also want to do something else with this top geometry because it's looking so ugly. I want to, this is this one here. Uh, we want to add a uh, mesh subdivide mesh and I'm going to plug this one here and if you increase the resolution you get a nice smooth mesh so this looks nice and when we start the animation it also looks nice so that will be kind of uh, the basics of this uh, effect Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to watch the making of this video tutorial where I'm going uh, in details how I did the background city with the pyramids and stuff and how I shaded the project. This is also very interesting. So make sure to watch that. Until then, have a nice day and happy blending.